Welcome in to Steelers Talk Yinzers. My name is Jack Sperry. Today I am answering your question or your questions on Wednesday's live show. If you missed the live show on Wednesday, but you still want to donate to the channel here, that's you can do that right now via Super Thanks. Uh, and we really do appreciate everybody that donates to the channel. You will get a shout out if you send us a super thanks. So how do you do that? Uh, we have this great new feature here on YouTube. It's called Super Thanks, and you can donate to shows outside of live videos. All you have to do is click that heart button with the money sign there in the middle, and we appreciate your support. We really, really do. Anything that you can give to the channel, we would really, really appreciate. You guys are the best. And, and again, I'll give you a shout out if you give a super thanks. All right, so we got first question here from Not Webb's World, who sent in a $20 super chat. He says, what is more likely, a trade for Jalen Carter or a trade for left tackle? Because if we are serious about getting Carter, I don't think 17 and 32 is enough. And if Chicago doesn't get him, they may get Paris Johnson Jr. And that's very true. So the way I would answer this is that if I were Omar Khan, if I'm trading up to number nine, I'm not giving up number 32, okay? It has to be 17 and 49, that's my best offer. And if I move up, my pick is Paris Johnson Jr. Or it's an offensive tackle if he's already off the board. Paris Johnson Jr. is my number one guy. Dan Moore Jr. is more of a zone kind of, kind of, you know, he's not a power guy. And the Steelers are moving to more of a power system this year under Matt Canada. It's what worked for them in the later part of last season. You bring in a guy like Paris Johnson Jr., you fix that. You, you completely, uh, you complete now with Isaac Sayamalu, all these moves that they've made on the offensive line this year. You put Paris Johnson Jr. on the left side. You have your picket fence to protect your quarterback, Kenny Pickett, for years to come. If I'm moving up, it's going to be for Paris Johnson Jr. Then we got a $5 super chat from Dominic Schrader, who says, Steelers, fool me once, fool me one time, shame on you. Fool me two times, shame on me. 32-49, a 20-24 second to the Bears for number nine overall and a fifth round pick. Devin Bush trade-up costs nothing and similar swap. So in this scenario, the Steelers would have two first round draft picks. And in this scenario, you could potentially grab like a Paris Johnson Jr. there at number nine, and then maybe like a Deontay Banks or Joey Porter Jr. falls to you at number 17. I don't think that's a terrible offer for the Steelers. I think that's a pretty good deal for the Steelers, if I'm being completely honest with you. I'm not sure if the Bears are willing to completely forego the first round this year in order to do it. Okay. Uh, they, you know, they had originally the number one overall pick right? And now, you know, they're at number nine. I'm not sure if they're going to completely move out of the first round here because that's what they'd be doing with this trade. If they make this trade, they're out of the first round and they need some really, really good talent. And where all the really, really elite talent is, is in the first round. So I really think pick number 17 is going to be a non-negotiable for them. But I like the idea from Dominic here because I think it works out for the Steelers. Then you got Dill Pickle who says, does the Steelers trading for Robinson mean Deontay Johnson is on the trade black? No, it does not. Not even close. I think that you're bringing in Allen Robinson to be a bigger slot receiver, to kind of be like a, a different flavor to Calvin Austin III in the slot. I think Calvin Austin III will probably get most of his snaps, at least early on in the year, in four wide receiver sets and on obvious passing situations. Because the simple fact of the matter is he's not going to be doing anything in the run game uh, at, at six, at whatever, he's like 5'9", 165 pounds. Like he's not going to move anybody on the line of scrimmage at that size. Cal, uh, uh, Allen Robinson is a good size. I think he's like close to 215, 210 pounds. He's going to be able to do a good job for you there. That's going to be his role. Deontay Johnson is still that get open guy, that safety blanket for Kenny Pickett. George Pickens is your deep threat. I think that Deontay Johnson's spot on this team is, is, is cemented, in my opinion. So let me know in the comment section what you guys think. Should the Steelers trade Deontay Johnson before the NFL draft or during the NFL draft, for that matter? For that matter? Type T for trade or type K for keep. Let me know in the comment section what you guys think about this one right now. This is going to be the pin comment on today's show. So whenever you get an ad break here, just go ahead, go into the comment section, find that pin comment and answer today's question. Next question comes from Matt Hyde here. And he says, if they trade up to nine, do they take Carter over Johnson and Jones? Their defense would be a beast. Yes, their defense would be a beast. If you're getting the Jalen Carter that, I, that I've seen on tape, which is one of the best, if not the best defensive ta tackle prospect to one of them to ever enter the NFL draft. Like he is a special player, man. And if you add that to TJ Watt, Cam Hayward and Alex Highsmith, I mean, good luck stopping that. But the question is, do the red flags scare you enough where 
you know, the, the off-field issues, the, the, the character concerns here. You know, he had a terrible pro day. Is he even going to be in shape for camp? I don't know the answers to those questions. So I, personally, I am scared off of him. If I'm trading up and I'm giving away more draft picks, I'm getting someone that I feel like is a sure thing. So that's why I would rather go Johnson or Jones, probably Johnson there if I'm trading up to number nine. Then you got another question here from Let's Go Sports, and he says, why is the best offensive line in the draft not an option? Osiris Torrance from Florida. Now, first of all, uh, I, I just don't think that the Steelers really need an interior offensive lineman, specifically in the starting role. Now, you know, there's speculation on who's going to be playing center. You know, there's some, diff there's some different reports going around that James Daniels is going to have a shot to move to center. Mason Cole, the Steelers do like, apparently. You got Nate Herbig and Isaac Saymalu in free agency. I just don't think you want to spend that first round pick on somebody that's going to be a pure guard in the league. Like, I just don't think that's necessarily the best move. Plus, offensive tackle is uh, far more valuable in NFL circles than interior offensive line is. It's a lot easier to find an interior offensive lineman than it is to find an offensive tackle in the National Football League. So that's why those offensive tackles have a bit more of panache, a bit more of those of those higher value picks. And, you know, Osiris Torrance in the second round, if he falls to like 32 or even 49, I'd be okay with that. The thing is, he's probably not going to be available at those picks. And at number 17, using it on a guard that's not really a true need for the Steelers, that's not my cup of tea. Then you got King Yinzer here, Anthony Fuller getting in the chat here. He says, do you think Brian Branch will be there at 32? I think there's a solid chance. I think there really is a solid chance that he's there at 32. Did not perform particularly well at the combine. He ran a 4.5 plus 40-yard dash, which was a lot slower than people expected. But here's the thing on Brian Branch, guys. He's a fantastic football player. He's somebody that had an elite 10-yard split. So this guy's got really great uh, acceleration. He's got great instincts. He's a good tackler. He's played in an NFL defense there with Nick Saban and the Crimson Tide. He is ready to go day one as a strong safety or a nickel cornerback, in my opinion. Don't think he has the speed to be outside or free safety, but I think if you're putting him at nickel corner, and the Steelers need one of those right now, by the way, he would be fantastic. He'd be one of the best nickels in the league, in my opinion. Then you got Meech H, who says, a $5 super chat here. He says, Steelers record prediction, record prediction. My bad on that one. Uh, I'm going to say, I, I'm going to say they get 11 wins. That's going to be my prediction. I'm going to say 11 wins next year and they make the playoffs as a wild card. I think Kenny Pickett's going to make a nice step in year two. Matt Canada and his offense might hold him back just a little bit, which is why I don't have him up at like 13 or 14 wins. Uh, but, you know, I'm a believer in Kenny Pickett, not so much in Matt Canada. I think he's got a good roster around him. You got a good run game. You're bringing in pieces on the offensive line. Defensively, uh, they finished the year as one of the best defenses in football, so I think that will be excellent. I think they'll get about 11 wins next year, and they'll make it the playoffs as a wild card. So do me a favor right now and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If we get up to 25,000 subscribers here on the channel before the NFL draft, we will be doing a raffle on our Steelers Talk Live show. So if you want a chance to win some Steelers memorabilia during the draft, go ahead, do me a favor, click that subscribe button for me right now. Then we get into Now Webb's world here with a $5 super chat. And he says, who slide the most in the draft? Money's on uh, Noah Sewell. My man was supposed to go no later than second round. Now I see Mox where he's a mid-day three pick. And you know, Now Webb's world, that, there, is a, there is a reason for that. <laughs> he, it, there is a reason for that. He is not fast whatsoever, man. Like this guy is a powerful guy. He's very aggressive which can get him in trouble at times, by the way. But when he hits you, you feel it. This guy is a big body. This guy can move. Uh, not too great, to be honest with you. His coverage ability is extremely raw right now. People watch the tape on this guy, and they're like, yeah, this guy is not a second-round pick, plain and simply. Like, he, he's got the last name with the panache, right? Noah Sewell, Penne Sewell. They're like, oh, this guy can play football too. When they look at the film, he's very raw still. He's not overly that athletic. So, you know, and then the combine performance wasn't fantastic either. All that combined to now he's probably going to be a day three pick. If the Steelers can get him, maybe if they trade down, get him in like the fifth round or maybe even the fourth round, that'd be a decent pick in my opinion. But, I mean, it, it, you know, he's got quite a, quite a bit of a bust potential in my opinion. Then you got Caleb Ebel here who says, if Siaki Ika and Cam Smith are there at 49, who is the pick? Cam Smith. If I don't know who the Steelers take at 17 and 32, Cam Smith is the better prospect. I think Siaki Ika for me has been someone that's fallen down my draft board 
quite a bit after I've after I've uh, I, after I've gone through the film, he's not re- he doesn't really provide much in terms of a pass rusher. He's not going to be able to stay on the field for all three downs. He's a true nose tackle, a rotational piece. But, you know, when it comes to run stuffing, that's what he does really, really well. I think he's more of a late third or early fourth round guy. Whereas Cam Smith, one of the best cornerbacks in this year's draft class, really, really good value there in the second round. If he falls to 49 and the Steelers haven't taken a cornerback, I would love to take him. Then you got Steelers Sam here. He says, what are the chances that the Steelers take a tight end? in the draft this year. I think, I think it's pretty decent. You know, you re-sign Zach Gentry to be your blocking tight end. Of course, you still got Pat Fryermuth and Connor Hayward in the building. But, you know, if you want that long-term answer at that blocking tight end spot, they brought Darnell Washington in from Georgia on a top 30 visit. I think they're interested in him. If he falls to like 49, I think that could be the pick. I'm not 100% sure on that. Depends on who else is there at 49. But I think that they're looking to add potentially a long-term option at blocking tight end. If they can get that, I think they might pull the trigger. That, now let me know in the comments section, should the Pittsburgh Steelers draft a tight end? You got Zach Gentry, you got Pat Firemuth, and Connor Hayward. Should the Steelers add another name to that list? Type Y if you think yes, or type N if you think no. Then we got a $2 super chat here from Gary Reynolds. It says, Noah Sewell equals Vince Williams. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know, man. I, I mean, I guess? I mean, I, I, I would have to say no on that one, Gary. I mean, to me, <laughs> I, I, like, I, I, I don't know how to answer that question. Like, I, I, I don't think so. Is what I'll say, Gary. I don't think that the Steelers are going to take Noah Sewell, to be honest with you. I think they're probably going to try to take linebacker earlier on in the draft. So, okay, so Jeremy's in my ear here. He's telling me some stuff here, some information. Vince Williams, I don't think Noah Sewell is the next Vince Williams. I just don't think so. Like, could he be a success in the league? Maybe. But, you know, Vince Williams, I, I'm not too sure on that one, Gary. Good question, though. Then you got Nazar uh, Kostuyev, who says, thoughts on the four pre-draft visits that were canceled? It was Dexter, Ringo, Dewan Jones, and Forbes all were canceled. Yes. Uh, I was actually going to – yeah, so uh, this is very interesting to me. Like, some people are taking this to, to mean, oh, these guys are off their board, blah, 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 blah. I don't think that's the case. I think they originally scheduled these things, and – Uh, they had some other players in their evaluation that they wanted to have visits with, they wanted to ask questions with, go over film with. And with these guys, Dexter, who they've already met with a number of times, Ringo, who's been a top prospect for a long time, Dewan Jones and Forbes, all these guys are players that they probably have a really, really good feel on, and they wanted to bring in some other players so that they could ask them more questions, go over some film. I don't think this necessarily means that they will not draft these guys. Now, they might not draft these guys. I mean, they can only take a certain amount of players, but at the same time, I don't think by any means it takes them off their board. Then we got DJ KJ here. He says, what player will be that hidden gem that everyone is overlooking? Uh, I like some, I, there are some players that I think are real hidden gems. I've, Sperry Psychos, Jeremy says, uh, you know, I like Ivan Pace Jr. from Cincinnati. His production is insane. And right now, most, most people have him as like a fourth or fifth round pick. I think he's a third-round value. He's a really, really good player, really athletic, good blitzer. He's pretty good in pass coverage as well. A little bit raw when it comes to the run game, you know, getting, you know, filling the run fits that he's supposed to. He, he, he can be inconsistent in that. But I like him a lot. I think he's a Steelers type of player. I'd really like him. Rejun Wright from, Cor- from Oregon State. I think he's a really good player as well. Some people, I mean, he's probably going to go day three, and I think that he's a really good long corner uh, that can work out in the NFL. And, you know, I, I just off the top of my head here, Zach Kuntz, tight end from Old Dominion. He had a perfect 10 relative athletic score at the Combine, one of the best Combine performances we've ever seen. And, you know, he doesn't have a ton of reps because he's dealt with injuries, and, you know, he was benched in Penn State earlier on in his career. He's only had one full season. But, man, when I watched his film – this guy can move, the, the film backs up the testing, and this guy it, it can be a real, real threat as a receiver in the National Football League. Probably not a fit for the Steelers, but those are three names that come to mind for me. So right now, guys, if you haven't already, you want more Steelers and NFL general content on Twitter, go to at Jack underscore Sperry. That's my Twitter handle. I got a bunch of stuff on there, film analysis, mock drafts, all this great stuff, additional content from me, Jack Sperry. You got to go to at Jack underscore Sperry. Follow me on Twitter today.